in some way brings about the wholeness of things, if that's what it does, it brings about the wholeness of things. And what makes whole, because after all, there has to be a whole before you can have wholeness, right? Before you can have uh, bigger, you have to have bigness. Before you can have bigness, there has to be something big or great. So, if you call it good, if you call these things good, they must have some kind of wholeness about it. That presupposes the existence of a whole. But what makes whole and, and uh, holds together, well, whatever is there, holds together whatever is there of each, well, if it holds it together, it holds it together as one, doesn't it? It holds it together as one. Hmm. And what do you agree if it holds it together as one? Um, By the good's presence, then, each is perfected. There's a perfection going on, isn't it? There's a perfection going on. And so the, there's a perfection going on. And the perfection is going on is a consequence of that unity. Right? Unity presupposes one, which is why I put it there. Hey, wait a minute now. If we're talking seriously about this, then in talking this way, it should fit all of these. Well then, can we talk about wholeness without talking about whole? Can we talk about whole without something holding together? Some, right? Or whatever it is, the being of each? And if you can talk about what holds it together, then it has some kind of curious existence as one. Because as a consequence of its presence, it brings about the perfection of each of these things. And if it brings about the perfection of each of these things because of some curious thing called one, then that wanting process, that wanting process must be some uh, process inherent in whatever has a goodness to it, and it's because of that wanting process that the wholeness and the whole and the perfection of each is brought about into a unity. And wanting, of course, presupposes the one. Oh, it doesn't. It? Yeah, yeah. I wonder what the one is, just you know, just by itself. What is the one? Since it seems to be an evidence in any of these in the way in which we just talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Let's change that good to bad. Okay. Oh, sure, we can do that. <clears throat> yeah. Identically? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except and we'll have if we call, rather yeah, than yeah. If, it, if we call it bad, then uh, will it still, well, I mean, will it still, no, that's okay. We'll call it bad for a moment. Intelligence definitely can be bad, wealth can be bad, humor can be bad, health, most probably, I can't immediately think, but I'm sure. Oh, certainly. Can be bad. That's true. You mean if something else is added to it? No, no, no. Just a lot of intelligent people are That's very true. unhappy. A lot of wealthy people. I think you're quite right. Produces a lot. Yeah, that's what absolutely. Most people would say badness, etc. And yet, yeah. the wholeness of yeah. when something is yeah. bad, it still has the wholeness. Yeah, yeah. These are not complete in themselves. They require something else to be perfect. But what happens when right? they're imperfect? What stops them from still having the wholeness? What stops them from being wholeness? No. In so far as there is health, there is a wholeness. Right. And right. if that health is bad, and it it's doesn't, still got its wholeness. Yeah, I, I don't want to lose what you're saying. So, uh, if, let's look at watch. intelligence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Intelligence. Mm -hmm. Since intelligence produces 
sadness, mm -hmm. let's call it bad. Most people would agree that sadness is not good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, watch, is there a difference between these things and what someone may do possessing these things? If the outcome of someone having that is bad, then I would say intelligence is bad. Yeah, but that wouldn't be the case, would it? It's, mm -hmm. Because intelligence isn't bad, it's what you should put it to. Help this in. Then it can't be good either. <clears throat> Pardon me? Then, then it's not good either. Yeah, okay. The, our point would be, we can call it good if there is, if there, from our judgment, there's a goodness about it. That is to say, if it has these qualities. It is not the good, you're absolutely right. Like, take health. Look here, watch. Again, you read my mind. <laughs> right? <Yeah. clears throat> he can be in perfect health, and he can be very intelligent and have the wealth of, of the ages about him. But it, does it depreciate the fact that he's healthy because he used it for the purposes that he did? He's still healthy. So healthy, being healthy, is a condition of all the parts functioning together on an ideal level, so all the parts come together and produce a wholeness. But depending upon what you use them, then this thing might become one. So, the whole goal in this game is when you talk this way, now we only have one question, and that's the big one which you're on. Can the mind be a one? Can the mind be a one? That's the whole issue. If the mind can be a one, if there can be a unity of the mind, uh-oh, wholeness, whole, holds together, be a one. And therefore, what's quite interesting in Plato's Republic is that it ends precisely on that issue. Now let me see if I can give it to you quite clearly. Hmm. Um, In all this, this is the education, and, and, and uh, the big conclusion in Book 10, I'm on uh, 603D, Book 10. In all this, then, is a man of one mind with himself, or is there a rebellion within him? Within him? Is he at war with himself? in his doings as where sight was concerned there was internal strife and he had contrary opinions within him about the same things at the same time oh I remember now we need not come to agreement about that again for we have already agreed sufficiently about all this in our former discussion that our soul is laden with thousands of such contradictions which exist all at once. Right. So that's the nature of man. It's contradictions. We're full of all contradictions. What's the goal then? This then is a man of one mind with himself.